5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Fifty years on, the feud continues, as a surprising number of people still believe that we never landed on the moon. The question lies at the heart of one of the greatest conspiracy theories of all time, a theory born from an era of global suspicion, political mistrust, and fake news. The whole Apollo program was a complete fabrication. Any idea could have been hoaxed is, quite frankly, insane. But when put to the test, can we unlock the scientific truth and once and for all, put these conspiracy theories to rest? In the 21st century, one of the greatest achievements in history still remains a source of controversy. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Did the Apollo moon landings really happen? Or were they the biggest hoax of all time? Trevor Weaver has dedicated years of research to the Apollo missions and was once a supporter of the moon landings. We didn't go to the moon, and that is an established fact. NASA provided all the topographical data they had, all the photographs, all their massive models to Stanley Kubrick, so they could actually fake moon scenes. Could the moon landings actually have been faked by Hollywood director Stanley Kubrick? The history books say otherwise, that Apollo 11 astronaut Edwin Buzz Aldrin spent three days traveling to the moon and was the first to follow Neil Armstrong's historic footsteps. Beautiful view. Isn't that something? I'm uh, totally in favor of freedom of speech. But I think uh, people need to be responsible when they think about intentionally, for their own benefit, misleading the young people who are the future leaders of our world. Moon conspiracy theorists have been a small but persistent and vocal group. Over the years, often confronting and accusing astronauts of lying and revived the moon landings hoax theories. But if the Apollo missions were faked, it would mean NASA had managed to keep one of the biggest secrets ever created. 50 years ago, the Soviet Union and the USA were locked in a struggle for global dominance. Then on October the 4th, 1957, the Soviets launched Sputnik, the world's first satellite into orbit a breakthrough that hit America hard and made the race to space even more crucial. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. At the peak of the Apollo program, NASA employed 400,000 people. But was putting a man on the moon so important that the United States government faked it? If so, a legion of NASA employees not only participated in the deception, but they kept the secret from the rest of the world. On July the 16th, 1969, the three Apollo 11 astronauts prepared for liftoff. But while the world eagerly awaited for history to be made, one man was already skeptical. I really believe that they weren't in the command capsule at launch. They, uh, they did a little bit of a magician act with the astronauts. They went up the elevator, but they came down the elevator. In other words, they did not want to risk the lives of the astronauts in case the Saturn blew up. An explosive claim, which Casing said the CIA tried to silence by making three attempts on his life. Like Casing, Marcus Allen, British publisher of Nexus, a magazine of alternative politics, history, and science, also questions NASA's engineering capability at the time of the launches. The problem is the whole Apollo program was a complete fabrication in order to be seen to succeed in the Cold War. The myth of Apollo is what is holding NASA back 
for future space travel. It's a tragedy. We didn't go the first time, we can't go now. We've never been. They lied to us. But if NASA didn't put a man on the moon, it would have had to fake the evidence. And its own visual images have done the most to fuel conspiracy theories. Every photograph taken on the lunar surface is online. 5,771. Some of them are not particularly good. Some are out of focus. Some are light struck. Some just don't show very much of interest. And some of them are very good indeed. And it's the very good ones I question. I do not believe they were taken on the moon. They were taken here on Earth. Conspiracy theorists believe NASA faked all six of the Apollo moon landings and point to these NASA photographs as proof. Some of the most renowned claims suggest that areas lit from behind should be in dark shade, when in fact, they reveal full detail. In others, the shadows don't run parallel. Is this because they were lit by separate sources, suggesting film lighting? Despite being taken in space, no stars are visible in any of the Apollo photographs. Gravity on the moon is one-sixth of that on Earth. But when archive footage is sped up, the astronauts appear to be running at normal speed in Earth's gravity. And with no atmosphere on the moon, why does the flag seem to wave in a breeze? This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 105 hours. Uh, now into the flight, Apollo 11. People all over the world were eagerly tuned in to the historic event. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Okay, engine stop. We copy it down, Eagle. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. And then Neil's voice came through. The Eagle has landed. And that, to me, was a minute of intense relief. And since I'm on the air live, I had to watch what I said. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Mankind's first steps on the moon have become the epicenter of hoax theories. Conspiracy theorists claim NASA faced a formidable challenge with its primitive 1960s technology. Just 14 months before the Apollo 11 mission, Neil Armstrong test piloted a prototype lunar lander. The result was disastrous. Unfortunately, it went out of his control and luckily he was able to eject before it crashed in flames. If they couldn't get a simulator to work on Earth, how in the world could they get the actual lunar module to work on the moon? Conspiracy theorists question not only the technical capabilities of the landing craft, but also the computing power that guided it. They didn't have the technology to do it. And the risk is too great. They could not afford to risk failure. They wouldn't allow themselves to rely on science and technology to get them there. One of the reasons that uh, we had difficulty in navigating close to the moon was that the computers available weren't able to provide a sufficiently detailed mathematical model of the moon's gravity. Unlike modern day PCs, the Apollo computers didn't have to store files or process images. Most of the number crunching was done at mission control and the information transmitted back to the astronauts. In their attempt to disprove the missions, conspiracy theorists have analyzed the footage of the moon landings frame by frame. One of the most famous pieces of footage in history is Buzz Aldrin's dance across the moonscape. Near the end of the two and a half hours, uh, in front of the television camera, I did have an opportunity to, to prance around and, and hop and, and demonstrate different uh, methods of, of moving around. 
the movement because of the restrictions of the spacesuit was basically like being in slow motion. The famous lunar walk shows Aldrin experimenting with the restrictions of the spacesuit. So-called kangaroo hop does work, but it seems oh, your forward ability is not quite as good. Conspiracy theorists have claimed that the footage was actually filmed in slow motion in a studio and that the astronauts were supported by wires to replicate these movements on the moon. The astronaut is dangling on a wire to take off, if you like, the, um, the difference between the Earth gravity and the moon gravity. The wire was between the backpack and the body. Uh, the problem is the astronauts tended to rely on this wire. So you see lots of jerky movements. While the exact conditions of the moon couldn't be replicated on Earth, NASA introduced methods to adapt the astronauts. One of their favorite methods was parabolic flight, or as the astronauts called it, the vomit comet. By climbing and diving in a series of arcs, an aeroplane could simulate 30-second windows of reduced gravity. These sessions served as road tests for the spacesuits and gave astronauts their first taste of lunar gravity. If, as the conspiracy theorists claim, NASA faked the Apollo missions, then it also had to fake the photographic evidence. But even with no doubt raised by the Russians 50 years on, perhaps all great human achievements are destined to attract skepticism and controversy. There will be landings, there will be men, there will be women on Mars soon. I hope that we don't see the same pattern of conspiracy theories surfacing, simply because it'll be a, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, achievement of mankind. They got to the moon with basically 1960s technology. Now with our technology, with our advanced computers, etc., it's still going to take them 25 years just to get back to the moon. Now, really, there's something wrong there. For all the effort it would take to create and hide a lie of such magnitude, it would have been far easier for NASA to build a rocket and put man on the moon.